Well, hello everybody, Mr. O here. And today I'm going to talk about cover illustration. This is going to be an assignment in my class, but it's also something that's great to learn. You've seen me do some work on uh, comic book covers, um, but we are gonna talk about magazine covers, book covers, manga covers, not just comic books. What makes an interesting cover um, and what's the purpose of a cover illustration? Well, let's address that one first. Uh, the main purpose of a cover illustration is to sell uh, the story, to sell the book. Um, if you do not do a great illustration, it won't catch somebody's eye. Now, could you have a bad cover illustration to have a best-selling book? Absolutely. And could you have this beautiful illustration and have a completely terrible book? Absolutely. Um, so let's just focus on the illustrations right now. So I'm going to do one on my character, um, the gray uh, in my story called Burlington Rising. Now, the reason I chose this is because I have other illustrations. And I'm going to tell you why they would never make good book covers. So let's just, let's just kind of, I'm going to go through a stack. In fact, I'm going to add one. Or did I? I already did. And so here's my character. So if this drawing um, was the cover of a book, it probably would catch your eye or it would, you might find it too busy. Um, for me, I find this, like if I were to have this drawing totally finished, um, with with Burlington Rising on it, it, it just might be too busy. Um, now, could I do something a little similar? Yes. Um, illustrations, sometimes when it comes to covers, being clear and simple, and in the time of digital art, uh, it does make that a little easier. Where I have the same character again, and um, again, Probably a little too much information. Now, could this be a cover? Yes. I almost find it a better splash page, which means a first page or an ending page, than I would use for a cover. And that's me personally. Now, some people would have something like this for a cover, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the other thing, if you've noticed, it was a single character, single character. Again, now this is a different character. Um that I drew, and you can see one, the character is probably a little too busy, two, kind of boring stance. So I drew this character, and after I got done, I realized how not exciting. Making the details, all the time I spent, it was neat, but the character itself would be boring. Now, is it simplified enough for a cover that answer, I think, is yes. Now, what happens if you get too simple? And this is where we get our character drawings. I'm willing to bet if you're watching this video, you have a sketchbook full of just face drawings um, of characters. And, and this is Holo. Uh, the last uh, character was my interpretation of Frankenstein. This is Holo from Wolf and Spice. I just happen to have it on my wall. And I grabbed this because this is probably the most common thing we do. And we would, you know, it wouldn't be very exciting just by itself. Um, now, could I splash this same image and even add some other images to it? Would it spice it up? Yes. And that wasn't a pun on Spice and Wolf. Um, let's get back to my original drawing. And you can kind of see what I might be talking about. This picture has some interest. Now it's unfinished, it's raw, I still got eraser marks, I got all my mistakes, um, but I am going to color this image in. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole image. There we go. Had to uh, raise the bar there. And what I did is we have an interaction between two characters. They're not directly interacting, but we know at least this book, this volume, uh, this issue is going to be about these two characters. Um, and 
the way he's looking down as he's swinging, he's probably looking down at something that's not her, and she's looking away in interest and kind of mild surprise. Now, the other thing is I don't have a detailed city. Um, I want to keep it s simple, and I'm probably not even going to do that black. In fact, when I color this, I'm going to be using color pencils. Would it be easier in digital? Absolutely. But sometimes when I have to teach, I got to teach uh, certain media and color pencils, this would be a great project with. So I recommend if you're not familiar with color pencils, try it once on a cover picture. Um, and I, when I get back to the city, I'm not going to probably do that black. I'll probably use like a pastel purple, uh, maybe a mulberry, um, just something that's not black, just something muted, more of the pastel range. Um, I got to draw a lot of details into the moon. The moon is kind of in an indirect character of the story because of, you know, why. What's the connection between the crack in the moon to these characters? Uh, what is the connection between these two characters? And as I'm drawing and developing, um, could I have done this on a front cover and a part of it on the back cover? Absolutely. We, we've talked about wrap covers, um, but I'm only going to be limited to one side. So do I have room to put a title? Absolutely. Could I even add some other words? Absolutely. Now, when I'm talking about two covers, you'd be surprised. Let's, let's use the Harry Potter series. Uh, the illustrations are pretty simple, yet eye-catching. Uh, even in the first book, there's two characters. Uh, the character, the second character is actually the snitch. When you put something of interest in there, so something that is a big part of the story that you're introducing that catches people's imagination, that can be your second character. It doesn't have to be an inanimate object. Um, if he was searching for something and having the object is, if that's what he's looking down for, can be like that second character, second character, sorry about that. And so, but I wanted to introduce basically what the two main protagonists are going to be in my story. The two main characters who are on the side of good, and I might even, uh, you know, put lettering on here. Now, when it comes to lettering, um, I ha haven't done it, and maybe I should do something at the end where I, I write something. But here is my suggestion, is that you actually draw out your letters, like draw it, and then use a light box to put it on your final paper. Because, like, if you just look at this leg, as we know, legs and arms probably give us the most, like, I don't like that direction of it, or I made his leg a little shorter than I really want it to because he's a lengthy character. But when it comes to lettering, unless you're a great letterer, which I am not, I would want to draw it on a separate piece of paper, get it perfect, then light box it onto my final. Okay? And if you guys don't know the use of the light box, please catch that video and uh, look that up on the Mr. O Art School uh, YouTube channel. And guys, um, this is a part one, and I want you guys to come back for when I, I'm going to introduce uh, color pencils in part two, and uh, but I want to let you know you are loved. And please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.